wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, I'm glad that I'm in the presence of the Lord, but I am this side of eternity once again today. I don't believe that it's going to be bad to be in heaven. I believe it's going to be a blessing and wonder. Amen. But there's work to be done until the Lord comes. And that work is being trampled, so trampled, <coughs> under the feet of men. People, let me, let me advise you into something. In the very day that you need to be serving the Lord, you're dragging your feet. I told uh, Sister Wilma this morning, I said, uh, if I wanted to be mean like I used to be behind this pulpit, I probably could pack this house ten times. <coughs> because I want you to know that I'm a good man now. I used to be mean with people. I, I had uh, a lot of things that God took me and told me to quit and I had to back off from it. Because that it was judgmental, didn't have the need, didn't meet the needs of people. But I want to tell you all something. You're taking advantage of God. You're taking advantage of His good will. People live like they had a thousand years to live. They live like that all they've got to do is just coast into heaven and God's going to love every one of them. And, and He is. But let me tell you something. The bad part about it is if you don't serve Him and keep His ordinance that He has laid down, you're not going. Amen. Let's, just, let's just face it. Praise the Lord. I want to go into the fourth chapter of Second Kings, and I want to I want to talk to you this morning from Obadiah's widow had come here, and uh, and she'd come before the man of God, reading from verse one of that chapter four through seven eight verses. And it says when the... Now there cried a certain woman of the widows of the sons of the prophets under Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knoweth that thou servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors is come to take unto them my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thou handmaid hast not anything in the house save a pot of oil. And then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors and even empty vessels borrowing not a few. Now listen to that word, not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out unto all of these vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went forth from them, from him, and shut the door upon her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her sons, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, 
And he said, go sell thy oil and pay thy debts. Debt. Hallelujah. And live thou and thy children of the rest. I want to ask you a question before you sit down. Are you ready to be poor this morning? Thank you. Are you ready? See, the oil wouldn't have been no good except they sold it. It was in the time of, this was in the time of famine. Famine. In a time when they didn't have uh, any oil, that, uh, and uh, and this come was God had made a plan all the way down through here. You may be seated, but I want to I, I want to read you another scripture before I go uh, too far from here in Psalms ninety two. I want to read you something. Praise the Lord in Psalms. Uh, 92 and I uh, I was reading this and I liked what I read then I'll preach to you 13th verse of the Psalm 92 thou that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flesh in the courts of our God and they shall still bring forth fruit in their old age. And they shall be fatted and flushing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in Him. Amen. I want you to, I, I felt like reading that even though that I want to talk to you about are you ready to do something for God? This, you see, the, this woman had minded exactly what the Lord had told her to do. He told her, said, you go and bar vessels. But don't just bar a few of them, bar a bunch of them. Put that in my own words. Go out there and bar everyone you can. Because you're about ready to receive a blessing. Praise the Lord. You see, we sit time after time in the house of the Lord with an empty vessel and we sit there and won't open our minds and our hearts up to where that God can pour out uh, into us the oil of gladness. And he said, I will anoint thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow man. And we'll sit there and we'll say, well, if somebody else would get a blessing, I might get one. Well, Sister Mitchell got a blessing this morning and blessed me. And Sister Ruby got a blessing this morning. Sister Willow got a blessing. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I saw him up here. Uh, I thought that I got rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, uh, because the Spirit of the Lord was upon them. Now what's your excuse? Hallelujah. Go bar some vessels. Go get some. You know what's going to happen? I give God the credit for my health being as good as it is. Yeah, i got a back problem. I nurse it. I deal with it every day. But there's one thing that God has given me. He's given me a sound mind. Hallelujah. And you, you see, I give God praises for that every day because my mother's side of the family, my near every one of them, her brothers and sisters and herself, my mother and all of them, when they left this world, uh, they uh, left this world with not even knowing they were in the world. Their mind with all timers, uh, uh, they left. It was just something that went down uh, up to my family. But God, hallelujah, uh, has increased into me uh, a mind that I, uh, hallelujah, can understand that I can still preach the Word of God, that I can still sing uh, about Jesus. God has given me, uh, hallelujah, refreshing in the Spirit uh, and the power of God. Why? Uh, because I'm not afraid uh, uh, to use what the Lord has given me. I'm not afraid to tell the world it's time to shape up uh, and get ready to go and be with the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 
You see, it doesn't matter whether you like me or not. Just hear what I have to say to you. It's time to be poured. That oil was worth nothing till they sold it. Until they was willing to take that oil. They could sit down. That woman could have sat down with that oil. And she could have said, we got oil, son. But she see, the Lord didn't give her oil to keep, but he gave her oil to use. Hallelujah. You see, when God gives you oil in your lamp, and he gives you oil, see, oil is used a lot in the Bible. Hallelujah. And he gives you oil in your heart, the oil of gladness. He gives it into your heart. Hallelujah. Not to just have oil, but to be a blessing unto everybody. Hallelujah. That you come in contact with. People can say, I'm a Christian. Hallelujah. If you don't have the fruits of a Christian, I would question it, wouldn't you? Amen. The fruits is more than just piling your hair up on your head and yes. dropping your uh, dresses down to your ankles. Hallelujah. And inside being full of dead man's bones. Amen. I'm, not, I'm not fighting this. I'm not saying <laughs> hallelujah that that's wrong. I'm very proud of people that, that dress on the board. <clears throat> hallelujah. But what I'm saying to you is you can be how you can have these so holy and dressed so holy that everybody can look at you and think you're an angel but down inside of you be full of dead man's bone but God wants you he said be not drunken on wine wherein is excess but be filled with the spirit of God yes. see he said for us to cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and of the Spirit. Hallelujah. It ain't nothing, is nothing that ever comes to a person any worse than a haughty spirit. One that, it, hallelujah, that can only find fault in everybody. Never finding no good. Never seeing nothing about anybody. Everybody's wrong uh, uh, but them. Uh, hallelujah. But, brother, when you get anointed and you apply the oil, uh, I'm glad this to you. You know what you're going to do? You're going to get up and say, Lord, I thank you know what the woman done whenever she took there. I feel all the vessels of uh, glory to God. She didn't stop there, uh, uh, but she went back to the man of God uh, and said, They're all full. Now, what do I do with them? He said, go sell them. Hallelujah. Pay all, pay all your debtors. And the rest of it's yours. You can do what you want to. The little boy that came and had the, had the little fishes and the little loaves when he came out there and he brought them, hallelujah, and laid them uh, little old loaves and fishes when they went back and asked them for it. You know what? Whenever that they got through and their 5,000 had eaten off of them, oh, glory to God, he went back and there were 12 baskets that were left over and they were his because he had sown. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, people. If you'll start sowing, you'll start being blessed. Amen. If this church Amen. will start sowing, hallelujah, they will start shouting the glory and the power and the anointing of God. I will get all over this place like it's supposed to be. But as long as you're sitting there wondering what somebody thinks about you or what you think about somebody else, you might as well get them gone. You ain't, you're not going to get nothing from God. Amen. But when you clean it all out, and you say, here, I'm a, I'm a vessel, I'm empty, I need something from God. All of them vessels. Go bar. Don't just bar a few, though. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Let, let me just talk to you about that just a minute. <clears throat> Somebody said, well, I want a soul from the Lord. I won one ten years ago to the Lord. <laughs> and I, well, I, I won one for the Lord anyway. What have you been doing the rest of the time? Why don't you go out there and tell somebody that God loves them? Praise the Lord. Why don't you go out there and say, I know a God that loves you. 
I know a God that, hallelujah, that wants to save you. He wants you to be a Christian. He wants you to go to church. He wants you to get anointed with His Spirit. He wants you to be blessed. Hallelujah. People will say, Brother Walter, you, you know all preachers do is preach about money. Hey, you wouldn't have to if you'd give God what belonged to Him. It would never have to be mentioned. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Brother Walls, you know, I think I don't think you ought to talk about that. I don't either. I think you ought to do it without having to be told. Amen. I think you ought to take the Word of God and apply it where you belong <laughs> and where it belongs. Hallelujah. Still to be in a skimp thing, it's time you stepped up to the trough and done what God's Bible said for you to do, or He said you are a robber. Hallelujah. They might as well just be plain about it happening. It's time, when people, let me tell you all something, it's time the baptism of the Holy Ghost was back in the church Amen. with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time that you begin to get down to the altar and get down to business with God. You can tell me all day, oh, Brother Walt, I don't need it. I'm going to stand here and tell you all day and all night and all the week and all the month. Hallelujah. You don't just need it. You better have it or you won't stand in this last day. Hallelujah. But Brother Walt, I'm going to get mad if you don't quit. I don't care if everybody in this house gets mad. I'm tired of the foolishness that's been going on around here. People say, well, I don't believe this and I don't believe it. I want to tell you something. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. I've had it for uh, since 1954. It's worked for me. Hallelujah. No wonder our churches are weak. No wonder they don't have the power and the anointing of God. No wonder you ain't shouting. Hallelujah. You ain't got what it takes to shout. It's time you pray to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I felt that come back about like a lead balloon. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, I've got a torch inside of me that'll melt your lead balloons. Come on. Glory to God. It's time. It's time. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. It's time that we begin to put the joy and the power and the anointing of God where it belongs. Hallelujah. Quit. Going around saying, well, I, I don't believe this and all. But I want to tell you something. Ain't nothing God can't do. Amen. You can say all day, well, God can't do this and God can't do that. Let me tell you something. God put the breath that you're breathing. Hallelujah. He put the color of your eyes and you. He put what hair you got on your head. He put it there. I'm glad that I got that. Oh, listen, uh, it's time that you and I uh, begin to quit making excuses uh, and begin to pour out and let God uh, and the power of the Holy Ghost move out. Church, it's time to move in. It's time to get anointed. It's time to believe what God's Bible says. Hallelujah. Are you here? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care if everybody in this church don't like me. If you don't like what I'm preaching this morning, hallelujah, you'll just have to go somewhere else because I'm going to preach this till everybody gets back where they belong in God. Praise the Lord. If you say, but oh, but now, Brother Walt, hey, don't tell me that it ain't real. Don't put your ideals against my experience. Hallelujah, I want you to know mine's not an ideal. Mine's an experience. And if you're, if you say it ain't true, you ain't got nothing but an idea. Hallelujah. Because I know what it'll do. Are you here? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. What are you saying? But what I'm saying is time to be poured out. Start being used to the Lord. Get anointed with the power of God. Hallelujah. But Brother Walt, I want you to know that I, hallelujah, uh, that I'm free. If you're free and the Son didn't set you free, it's time you come back and got anointed with the power of God and let the Son set you free, then you'll be free indeed. Amen. Where's the oil? People... I'm, in a, I'm supposed to be in a Pentecostal church this morning that believes in God moving. And I wonder, hallelujah, and I've been to a lot of funerals that's got a little spirit in it, and some of you have this morning. Hallelujah, you don't like what I'm preaching, and I really don't care. Hallelujah. It's time that people lined up to the Word of God. Yes. Amen. Come on. You can deny all you want to. 
I'm going to tell you something. If you don't listen to what I'm saying, you're in trouble. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. I want to tell y'all something. You are looking at one of the most dreadful things that our eyes have ever looked at. I can tell you something this morning, if God would let me, I'd tell you in a minute, that would scare your socks off. You wouldn't sleep when you went home. I haven't slept very much in the last, last two weeks because of a God speaking to me through a dream. And I've saw a lot of visions and dreams, but I've never seen one as terrible as this is. I'd like to take you, but God won't let me. I thought I could, hallelujah, God's, when God, you, you, you know, I, I was thinking this morning when Brother Mitchell was saying about <coughs> parables, you know, and things that Jesus done, I mean, when he healed people and things like that, and said, don't go tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't tell nobody. Hallelujah. He knew they was going to, didn't he? Yeah. He told me this, but I, he won't let me take me. And it's burning me down into my, the bottom of my soul. But I can't tell you. <coughs> but I'll tell you this. You ain't seen nothing yet. You think you've seen something? You think you're tough? You think you can handle anything? Honey, neither death <coughs> or powers or principalities. The Bible said, hallelujah, can overcome us. But what I saw, what I saw, it's going to take everything you will ever have and ever will have. Your money is going to be worth nothing. <coughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? Your money is going to be worth nothing. All that you got, you can have it stacked up. You can have it put anywhere you want to. You can say, well, I'm worth this and I'm worth that. There's coming a day when it's going to be worthless. I'll tell you that right now. Amen. Oh, my. I know you say, but listen, God knows where to hit you. You know, if you want to hurt somebody, you hit them in a pocketbook. Do you hear what I'm saying? You want to hurt somebody, you just take their, you just take their money with them. You want to hurt somebody, but let me tell you something. God is going to bring you to him. Church, do you hear me? Amen. God is going to to bring you to Him. Amen. Thank you. And it's not going to be fancy the way He brings you. Hallelujah. You see what I saw. <coughs> Hallelujah. And you, you'd come run into this church. I'm ready to go to heaven. Amen. I won't tell you all that. I know you say, Brother Walsh, hallelujah. I've never, I've never wanted to go be with the Lord any more than I do now to avoid all that I've saw. But I won't get to go there. Hallelujah. Are you ready to be used? Are you ready to be poured out? Are you ready for God? to take you and put the oil of gladness in you and then you do something besides sit there on the seat with your hands folded and wonder what everybody else is going to do. I want to tell you something, Brother Dan, this is your move. Lester, this is your move. Sister Debbie, it's your move now. Hallelujah. Brother Mitchell, it's your move. You're the one. It's going to be an individual thing and every individual in this house, I want you to know this morning, you better muster every ounce of faith, faith that you can get because there is a troubling spirit. Now listen to what I'm telling you. There is a troubling spirit 
that is already in the land and moving over the land that's troubling the mind of people. Yes. The devil took the word of God and twisted it. I want to tell you all something. Jesus Christ is the answer to every Christian that's born again. Hallelujah. The cross. Hallelujah. Calvary paid the debt for our sins. And all of these other things that are rising up and saying, Hallelujah. Well, this is my God. He is your God. But I want to tell you all something. He's not the one that's going to take you out of this thing and take you to heaven. He's going to burn just like you do. You and your God. If you don't serve Jesus Christ and Him alone. Hallelujah. All these other pagan gods. They ain't worth the time it takes. Hallelujah. They'll take you to hell. And that's all they'll do for you. Oh, but for the world, I wouldn't, I'm not going to have nothing to do with them. You already are. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm saying? You already are. They've got their hands ready in everything that you're doing. It's time we turn to Jesus Christ. There will be a day when you'll either say, I won't serve the Lord. <clears throat> Or you'll say, I'll serve the Lord. And you'll die for Him. It's coming soon. Hallelujah. I saw the souls of them. There were on the altar. There were slain. For the Word of God and for the testimony of the Him. And they, the rich man, chief captain, mighty men, all of them, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain and cried for the rocks and the mountain to fall on us, hide us from the wrath of God for the great day of His wrath has come and who will be able to stand? This is 6th chapter of Revelation. Well, that upon that. What are you saying, Brother Paul? I'm saying you haven't saw nothing yet. They can squeak talk you all they want to. They can pat you on the back and tell you all day long, hallelujah, sin is sin, and sin will separate you from the love of God. And anybody that will tell you any different will lie to you. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. What you sow, you're going to reap. You, you can sit and you think, well, I'm a big man, I'm a big woman, I'm too, I'm too rich, I'm too pretty, I'm to serve the Lord, I'm... Hallelujah. And you can take all them things. You can put some beasts of high mind and you want to. God's going to break your mind right now. Amen. Hallelujah. When you stand and you see a man that you know that weighed 400 pounds at one time, almost well, a tall man, and you see him eat cancer, eat his body away till he weighed 100 pounds, look like a bunch of bones laying on the floor. <coughs> and him saying, I've been a deacon for 40 something years in a church named the church name he's in said but I don't know where I'm ready to meet God or not. Hallelujah. That makes you want to get down and cry. Then you've got to pour out to them and say but this is what it takes to be a Christian. Church members it ain't worth the time it takes to write your name on a church book. Born again with the Spirit of God. Blood washed, Holy Ghost filled, God sent, prayed down salvation is all that's going to stand. Like me or not, you're not going if you're not ready. You're going to be let down. Hallelujah. One day, I went to the post office and I mailed a letter and I I forgot to put a stamp on it. Hallelujah. So, it wound up, I don't know how it got there, but it wound up back in my, my mailbox, I guess. <coughs> Love me or something. Say, but anyway, I, I, I went out and I picked it up and I thought, well, that's, 
that's how I took that to the post office. I remember one once stood back in my, back in my mailbox. And then I looked and I didn't have no stamp on it. Somebody loved me enough, they brought it back to me. <laughs> hey, one of these days, one of these days, let, let, let me just name just a little bit. I'm close here a minute. <coughs> Do you know that our, our government is in critical condition? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know that our government, our congressmen, have put our post offices in critical condition? Mm -hmm. Took billions, not millions, but billions of dollars away from our post offices. You know why? So they could use the money for something else. Yeah. Post, 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 and our post office is in trouble. Mm -hmm. You can say it any way you want to. It's time, it's time that you and I woke up. And you say, Brother Walter, do you think we ought to, we ought to change our congressmen and our representatives? Oh. Hallelujah. You can change all of them you want to. But I'll tell you one thing, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. I know that more than I've ever known it in all my life. I've never been a politician. But I'll tell you one thing. You want to stay out of trouble, I'm going to tell you this. If you want to stay out of trouble, you better go to the poll. And I ain't, how to do it, people would so, throw me in jail to hear me say that. You better go and you better vote against the president of the United States that you've got in there right now. Or you are in serious trouble. But I'm afraid we're too late. Hallelujah. Would you vote for him, Brother Walt? I never voted for him when he went in. I won't vote for him the next time. Hallelujah. But what are you trying to tell us? Are you trying to be a politician? No, I'm trying to tell you, if you don't vote, you're in trouble. If you do vote, you're in trouble. Hallelujah. So I don't know which way to take it, but I'll tell you one thing. If you vote against it, oh, but Brother Walt, I'm a Democrat and I don't care who knows it. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican or a hallelujah, a soap or whatever you want to call it. Praise the Lord, I don't care what you are. You better listen when you walk into that poll in uh, hallelujah in 2012. I may not uh, be here, I believe I will, but I want to tell you, you better be careful when you walk in there. You better know what button to push you get in trouble. Well, you're in more trouble than you are right now. It's, it's, it's coming anyway, so I don't know what to tell you to do, but all I can tell you is stand for taking your ground because we're in trouble right now. Amen. Right now. Hear what I'm telling you. Right now. Let, let, let me just, I know we all noticed this on the news where people just now, through all these people that have gone to, gone to prison and everything else, there's people that had their money invested, and the, some fat cats have got all their money now, and they can't find their money no more. Yet. Now, they, all their life saving. Hallelujah. Man was, I'd seen more one man, I think they, they said he had, uh, some were, was over, uh, a couple million dollars. You know how much money he's had that he got? Fifteen thousand dollars is what he has recovered. Think about that. I know you say, Brother Walt, that don't make any difference. Money won't get you in heaven, but it'll keep you living until God calls you to heaven. <laughs> and it's not yours. If it's not yours, then keep your hands off of it. <coughs> Hallelujah. I know you all say, Brother Walt, you're crazy this morning. I'm going to get crazy in what I am right now. It's time we poured it out. Amen. And we let the world know where we're at. It's time we went and told people, Hallelujah, you better get pre prepared to stand. Hey, what would you do? What would you? How many of you here? No, I'm not going to ask you to hold your hand up. But I'm going to ask you this question. Don't hold your hand up. How many of you know how to milk the old cow this morning? Praise the Lord to go out and gather the eggs in or 
Hallelujah. How many even know how to go out there and, and butcher the old hog and hang him up and smoke his meat? And, hallelujah. How many of you know how to put them beans into a can and, and all of that and can the hallelujah where you can have something to eat? Well, it's coming to there and you better get ready. Praise the Lord. Ah, oh, but of all, I've heard all this thing. I've heard the Lord's coming ever since I was born. I'll soon be 80 years old, and I've been taught that all my life. And I know one thing this morning. I'm 80 years closer to the coming of the Lord than I was when I came. Amen. But I'm going to go out. Hallelujah. I'm going out fighting. I come into the world, they tell me I don't remember it. I, I was there, but I don't remember it. Uh, when I come into the world, but I was born in a log cabin. My dad owned a log cabin, and I was born in there, and it happened to be two of us. And it was a big, it was, it was on March the 21st of 1932, and I know what was happening that day. They had a storm going on. And... I was born, and they thought the house was going to blow away. And I come into the world in a storm, and I've been storming ever since then. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But this is what I'm saying. I know what was going on that day. How do you know it? Because my mom and dad told me. You know what else they told me? They told me my last name was Walls. I've had that all my life. Hallelujah. And you, you, know, you know what else they told me? Hallelujah. They told me that I was a boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I, I'm getting back in my second childhood. I was born with no hair, <laughs> no teeth, <laughs> and no glasses. Let me tell you all something, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> These are my teeth. I paid the last payment on them. I haven't had them for 40 years, but I paid the last payment on them. Praise the Lord. I don't know about this hurt. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, Brother Hurt. I'm not going to have any more hurt because it's getting thinner all the time. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you all something. I want that. I'm going to show you all. See a gap right on the back of my hair back there? <laughs> you all see that? Yes. You can see it fine, can't you? Oh, yeah. Sure. I forgot. Sister Wim would cut my hair, and I forgot to tell her that I had a, <laughs> a tumor taken off my neck back there, and had to leave my hair a little bit longer to cover it up. <laughs> she said, Why well, didn't you have your hair? <laughs> I said two weeks will take care of that. The only the, the difference in a good haircut and a bad one is about a week and a half. <laughs> hallelujah. But listen, you say, well, uh, well, Brother Walls, hallelujah. Well, I now you can you can blame Doctor Hinton here in Preston. He's he's the one to cut that off. Many of Mark get all the time. He's back there working on it. I told him he hurt me. I was going I was going to get a hold of him and. And he said, I've once got the knife. You better be quiet. <laughs> so I agreed with him and laid there still and quiet. Hallelujah. Ain't God wonderful. Listen to what I said. Are you ready to pour out? Are you ready to be used? Are you, you know what you ought to do. Church, you ought to get up and you ought to say, God, I want to be used of you. Not just to have a church here. Hallelujah. But you know what would happen? If everybody that sits in this Sunday school class... I thank God for everybody that anticipates in it. I, I love the Sunday school class, and I love to hear you anticipate in it. But if everybody that here would go home, and you would say, Lord, I want you to bless Brother Mitchell. I want you to bless him. He's my teacher, and I want, I want you to instruct him and bless him. You'd come back next Sunday, you'd be in a different Sunday school class. If you would pray, Lord, I want you to bless our pastor, Brother Wallace. Hallelujah. I want you to bless our song leader. 
I want you to bless our youth. But I want you to bless everybody that has a part. Our new positions and everything. You'd come back and be in a different church. Hallelujah. Tonight. You go home and pray. Tell what you do. Go home and pray for Brother Walls. Determine in your heart, I'm going to be poured out for the Lord. I'm going to be used. Glory to God. And I'm going to let God use me. Amen. You come back tonight and you'll enjoy what God's doing. It's time the laziness that's in the churches is out. Glory to God. Out. And you had a real anointing of the power of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I... I'll tell you, you never know. I, I was, I've been reading Sister Debbie McNeely's book, and she was talking about going into Sears store and said that the clerk came up and said, said she was walking down the aisle, and the clerk came up and said, can I help you find something? She said, by the way, you can't help me. She said, okay. said, uh, here, I want to give you... I want to give you something. Here's your scripture. You can read that scripture for me. Sister Debbie said that she read the scripture that she gave her. Tears began to flow down her face. And this girl fell on the floor in the store and began to weep. And she stirred up the whole store. Sister Debbie said, I stood there. I can just see Debbie out of her. She said, she's a little girl. I can just see her standing there. <laughs> she said, all of the clerks began to run over and said, are, are you all right? Debbie said, I said, she's all right. She's just having an experience with God. She said, I didn't know what to do. Hallelujah. What would happen if that happened to you? See, why don't you pour out yourself to God? Won't you get out there and let God use you? Won't you go tell somebody, get a scripture in your heart and get a scripture in your mind. Hallelujah. Uh, send them a scripture. Hallelujah. By, uh, by uh, uh, voicemail or whatever. You have to send them a scripture that will live and call somebody and give them a scripture and tell them God loves them. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody's waiting to hear from you. God's waiting to hear from all of us. He's going to call us. He's going to call us. I received a call this week. Send, ask them, hey, Brother Walt, would you conduct a funeral of this person? I said, uh, yes, I will. I'll take care of it. I grew up with this person. I was able to, I hope to help somebody. Ain't God wonderful? Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost power. Church, quit playing church. This is serious business. Hallelujah. Very, very, very serious business. I feel God's presence right here this morning. I'm going to ask you a question. Sister Brenda, could I get you and just make you back over here? Praise the Lord. Can I get you, make you come up here and sing us a song? I'm not going to leave here until I make an altar call this morning. Because I feel like it's time we got poured out for God. Go bar. Don't go out there to win one soul. Go out there to win a bunch of souls to the Lord. Don't make any difference. You say, Brother Walt, they don't like me. They say they don't like what I'm doing. They don't like me. That doesn't make any difference. You go out there with an attitude, I'm going to win somebody for God. I want you to come. I want you to dedicate to God your life today. If, you're not, if you don't know where you're ready to meet God or not, I want you to be ready to meet God. 